Imagine you're in an empty airport early in the morning. There's hardly anyone there as you stroll leisurely toward your plane. Suddenly, someone walks up to you and says, Excuse me, can you tell me how to get to gate 7? Obviously, you weren't hoping for or expecting someone to come up and ask this question. But since he looks nice enough and you've got a spare second, you interrupt your train of thought and point him on his way. Now imagine the same airport, but it's 3 in the afternoon and you're late for your flight. The terminal is crowded with people, all jostling for position. You've been approached five times by various faux charities on your way to the gate, and to top it all off, you've got a headache. Same guy comes up to you and asks the same question. Odds are, your response will be a little different. If you're a New Yorker, you might ignore him altogether. Or you may stop what you were doing, say sorry, and then move on. A third scenario is even worse. What if he's the fourth or the tenth or the hundredth person who's asked you the same question? Sooner or later, you're going to tune out the interruptions. Sooner or later, it all becomes background noise. Your life is a lot like that airport scene. You've got too much to do and not enough time to get it done. You're being accosted by strangers constantly. Every day, you're exposed to more than four hours of media. Most of it is optimized to interrupt what you're doing. And it's getting increasingly difficult to find a little peace and quiet. For 90 years, marketers have relied on one form of advertising almost exclusively. I call it interruption marketing. Interruption because the key to each and every ad is to interrupt what the viewers are doing in order to get them to think about something else. And as the marketplace for advertising gets more and more cluttered, it becomes increasingly difficult to interrupt the consumer. The ironic thing is that marketers have responded to this problem with the single worst cure possible. To deal with the clutter and the diminished effectiveness of interruption marketing, they're interrupting us even more. That's right. Over the last 30 years, advertisers have dramatically increased their ad spending. They've also increased the noise level of their ads, more jump cuts, more in-your-face techniques, and searched everywhere for new ways to interrupt your day. Technology in the marketplace have brought the consumer a glut of ways to be exposed to advertising. There are dozens, and in some areas, hundreds, of TV channels to choose from. Even worse is the World Wide Web. At last count, there were nearly 37 million different commercial websites. That means there are about two people online for every single website. Hardly a mass market of interest to an interruption marketer. The problem of clutter saturation isn't limited to electronic media. There are enough consumer magazines, ignoring the even larger category of trade magazines for a moment, to keep a reader busy reading magazines full-time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Obviously, the mass market is dying. The vast splintering of media means that a marketer can't reach a significant percentage of the population with any single communication. That's one reason the Super Bowl can charge so much for advertisements. Big events are unique in their ability to deliver about half the consumers watching TV. So they're the perfect platform for interruption marketing aimed at the mass audience. Other than buying even more traditional advertising, how are mass marketers dealing with this profound info glut? They're taking four approaches. First, they're spending more in odd places, not just on traditional TV ads, but on a wide range of interesting and obscure media. Campbell's Soup bought ads on parking meters. Macy's spends a fortune on its parade. Kellogg's has spent millions building a presence on the World Wide Web, a fascinating way to sell cereal. Second, they're making advertisements ever more controversial and entertaining. Coca-Cola hired talent agency CAA to enlist top-flight Hollywood directors to make commercials. Candies features a woman sitting on a toilet in its magazine ads for shoes. Spike Lee's ad agency did more than $50 million in billings last year. Third, they're changing ad campaigns more often in order to keep them, quote, interesting and fresh. Nike just ran a series of ads without the swoosh, arguably one of the most effective logos of the last generation. Apple Computer changes its tagline virtually annually. Wendy's and McDonald's and Burger King jump from one approach to the other, all hoping for a holy grail that captures attention. The fourth and last approach, which is as profound as the other three, 
is that many marketers are abandoning advertising and replacing it with direct mail and promotions. Marketers now allocate about 52% of their annual ad budgets for direct mail and promotions, a significant increase over past years. Even though they work better than advertising, direct mail promotions are astonishingly wasteful. A 2% response for a direct mail campaign will earn the smart marketer a raise at most companies. But a 2% response means that the same campaign was trashed, ignored, or rejected by an amazing 98% of the target audience. From the perspective of the marketer, however, if the campaign earns more than it costs, it's worth doing again. Of course, as each of these promotional media becomes measurably effective, every smart marketer rushes to join in, which creates a glut that diminishes the effectiveness of the promotions. So, is mass marketing due for a cataclysmic shakeout? Absolutely. A new form of marketing is changing the landscape, and it will affect interruption marketing as significantly as the automobile affected the makers of buggy whips.